Hi guys. Hope you're doing well. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, either biological mothers or people that have stepped into mothers. I just was on the phone with my mother and it was wonderful to hear her voice this morning. So have a wonderful Mother's Day with your children, with your grandchildren, with your family. It's so wonderful to set days apart to be thankful for mothers and for fathers, for your sister and brother, brothers, just to be thankful for those family, either biological family or friends that feel like family or people that have stepped in for you. Um, Because sometimes we take those around us for granted until it's too late. My mother, my mother always said, give me my flowers while I'm here because when I'm gone, I can't uh, smell them, I can't appreciate them. So remember to tell those you love that you love them and um, just remember to appreciate them because you never know what day is going to be their last or your last. So just be thankful and be grateful for what you have. Um, because James says life is like like a vapor. One day you're here, next you're not. Um, I didn't mean to go on that tangent, but just be grateful for who and what you have. I think we spend so much time chasing things and um, chasing what we think we need or who we think we need or chasing money or chasing stuff or chasing uh, 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 chasing things, chasing status, chasing, you know, different things that we often forget to stop and and say thank you or be grateful for what we have. And Mother's Day and any day like it is a day for gratitude. So today be grateful for what you have because there's always someone who is, quote, doing better than you, and there, there is always something, one doing uh, worse than you. So the, instead of wishing for what that, what that person has or I don't have this, just be, be grateful because the more, the more you display gratitude is the more the things you need come into your life because sometimes I think we need we think we need things that we don't need we need more stuff we need a better car we need a girlfriend boyfriend partner and we don't need all this stuff we want all this stuff but we don't need it. And God hasn't um, made us to be an island. So in a way, we do need each other. But we don't need each other to the point where um, where um, I'd rather hurt than be alone. Or, or, I'd, or I'd, I'd rather... Um, put up with garbage so I don't have to be alone. Um, I think that sometimes because there are times and seasons in a person's life. There there are times and seasons in singleness and there are times and seasons in marriage. 
there are times in singleness where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy I'm single. And there are times in singleness when uh, the loneliness is so oppressive, but I remember that I'm okay by myself. Whether that Mr. Someone comes or not, I'm okay. And I, I, I saw um, this thing by Tim Ross the other day. Um, he said there are times and seasons in marriage. There are times and seasons where I'm totally in love with my wife and she can do no wrong in the clouds or whatever. And there are times and seasons where to love is challenging. So you just have to know what time and what season you are in for that certain thing. Whether you're married or whether you're single, there are pluses and minuses to both. Wherever you are in your life, there are pluses and minuses. Whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're um you know, whether you're divorced, whether you're, you know, wh whatever you are, just appreciate and love the stages of life you're in. And remember what you see is not always the truth. Um, it takes a moment to take a picture, but Behind that picture is a story. And usually the picture is not the story. It's just a snap snapshot. Although on Instagram they do call it stories. But that picture is not a story. It's just a snapshot. And you can't compare your lived life. It's not wise to compare your lived life to somebody's snapshot. And because real life takes work. Real, li real life, they say, they say marriage takes work. But I would say any life takes work. I would say any life takes work, any life lived takes work, any, any life to be happy being single and to be totally complete in yourself, that takes self-work, self-work, um, to be, to be, okay with the down times when you're down in your marriage and to stick it out, that takes work. It takes work to stay when things are not being happy, when things are not happy and money's not coming in and the kids are driving you crazy. That takes work and commitment. So anywhere you are in your life, it takes work. It takes work to be okay with getting older. With all the aches and pains and stuff you have to go through. It takes work to be, to be a kid. The stage doesn't take work, but to learn and grow and be okay with learning and growing and making mistakes and knowing that you're going to screw up at some point and learning how to navig navigate those screw-ups because the thing you can do with screw-ups is learn from them or just, just learn and grow from them. Or you can you can let the scrubs 
keep you down. You have choices in life and it, it takes time to learn and grow. And in this cookie cutter generation, we don't give ourselves time to learn and grow anymore. Like we need to know it all right now. We need to we need to have it all together right now. We don't. We're all learning. We're all growing every day, and it's in the imperfections of life that we discover what life is to us, and we. D- we discover the life that he gave us and that we can just be okay with it. And that brings me in a roundabout way to the title of my sermon, which is called Peace, Be Still. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done for me, and I thank you for for all that you've done for me and your beautiful people and the beautiful people that are watching me this morning. I pray, Lord God, for every mother of God this morning. I celebrate her, Lord God. Every mother, every grandmother, every sister, every woman who has stepped in, Lord Jesus, where... where where a child needed a mother figure. I I pray that I can convey the message that you've you've, um, given to me. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus, amen. Um, As I was praying this week, um, the Lord said, "I want you to, I want you to tell the pe- the people out there, peace, be still." Yes, that's what I want to say to the people uh, there right now. It's peace, be still. Um, there, there's so much in life that we are that we are dealing with so much more in our lives, so much that we, um, that we are dealing with. It seems like we are in a constant war, constant battle. And the Lord is saying right now, peace, be still. He's like, you're, you're running on empty. You're, you're doing too much. And, he just wants to tell you peace, be still. He wants you to, he wants to grant you his peace today. And he says right now to you today, peace, be still. All your worries, all your cares, all everything that has to do with you, he wants to grant you his peace. Um, the most famous story about peace in the Bible is is when Jesus was it was um tired so he was sleeping in the boat and um and the storm was raging and and the winds were everything was going crazy outside. So so Jesus um so the disciples woke Jesus up and Jesus said to the winds and to the waves, peace, be still. And he says, when you can't say peace, be still, know that I will say peace, be still. He wants you to have a peaceful sleep. Peace doesn't mean that everything will be going well all the time. Peace to me means when things outside are not going well, 
inside, you still have this calm. You still have, have this calm because with calm becomes the, uh, comes uh, rational thinking. And I know when I'm not calm, when things are going haywire in my life and it doesn't seem peaceful, um, my rational thoughts go out of the way. And I, I end up making the most mistakes. Peace brings rationality. With peace, you get a clear head. And peace is not just to uh, lull, you, lull you into calm, like it's okay. Peace is to, because when you have peace, you can think rationally like you can you can uh you can tell when it's a time to move or when it's a time to stay still or what to do when your mind's a mess you can't you can't think straight you're just r- running on empty you're just rushing around and and you can't, and you can't think straight. So that's why he wants to give you peace, because in peace, you can, you can, um, manage your emotions, not stuff down your emotions. You can. You can navigate your emotional storm. You can feel emotions when you need to feel them. Because um, what I've learned from Dr. Anita is, uh, Dr. Anita Phillips is a trauma therapist. And, you know, a lot of people say just push through the emotions and, don't show the emotions, be strong. But showing emotions is strength. And that's what peace gives you. Peace gives you the the wherewithal to show emotions and how to navigate those emotions. No emotions is bad, but it's knowing how to manage and navigate your emotions. That is the key to life. Not stopping and pretending you don't feel things. God gave us emotions. They're not to be stuffed down or or not shown. They're to be expressed. But how you express them is the key. And that's what peace gives you. It gives you a clear head to experience the situation, to navigate the situation. Um, you know, sometimes when I feel stressed, I lose my mind. But you know what? What I'm discovering, peace gives me the wherewithal to to see the situation for what it is. When I have peace, I can calmly navigate the situation and know what I need to do. When I'm all worked up, I I just lose my mind and I can't think. When I have peace, I can I can think through the situation. It's still, it's still challenging, but um, peace gives me more of a way to navigate those challenges because life is full of challenges. It will always be full of challenges, whether it be relational challenges, 
whether it be um, financial challenges, whether it be whatever kind of challenges, it's you can't run from, it isn't wise to run from the challenges of life because they will still be there. Life is hard, life is challenging, but it's how you navigate those challenges and how you come through those challenges and what you learn from those challenges. I had a situation this week where I'm not the kind of person who likes to make waves, but um, there was a time this week where I just had to say how I felt. And when, when I said it, when I said how I felt instead of saying it in my head and, and griping and grumbling about it, I felt such peace about it. And it was so wonderful that I just spoke up and I, and I said to the person what I said to them. And it was so freeing for me. Um, and sometimes in peace, it will show you how to, what to speak and how to speak. See, in confusion, people say things that they don't mean. In, in like, when people are reactionary in the, the loudness of their, when, when things are, are scattered and um, uh, not scattered, but when things are just messy and uh, not peaceful and just kind of disjointed and not peaceful, when your head's a mess, uh, you can't be kind of you just say things, but in peace, it gives you um, how to say it, what to say, how to approach it. Um, and st instead of instead of saying um, how to deal with this person, ask for peace about the situation and the person, and in that moment, the Lord will give you how to navigate uh, that situation. Maybe not in that moment, but when you have to confront the situation, the, the Lord will show you how to navigate, what, what, what to say, how to say it, because there are there are there's there's a wrong way to do the right thing and maybe it's not what you're saying that's wrong but maybe it's the way you're saying it. and peace that calmness that the lord says my peace i give you my peace i leave with you not as the world Give us peace, give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, maybe that is the peace that will that will tell you how to solve problems that will give you a clear head. Chaos doesn't give you a clear head. Chaos just makes things a mess. Chaos is is reactionary, while peace can give you revelation on how to react to that person and how to 
let the Holy Spirit speak speak to you. It was so funny. In that moment, I said, I just said, and it was like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. And I said what I said, and it came up so good. So uh, peace gives you the skills to navigate through your life. Peace can give you understanding. Peace can give you a way to navigate the chaos. Sometimes peace isn't saying anything at all, but sometimes peace will, will let you know how to say a thing. And, and the Lord wants to teach you how to navigate your life. See, the thing about the Lord that people don't don't say anymore is um, the Lord, accepting the Lord into your life is not just going to heaven, oh, I'll go to heaven when I die and not hell. That's one thing. But accepting the Lord into your life because he's the creator of life, it it gives you navigation skills. The Holy Spirit, to me, is not about speaking in tongues. It's not about all that. The Holy Spirit, he is the ultimate navigation tool. Um, and I think that that without the Holy Spirit, it is hard to navigate life because the Lord created life. He also created every person. So he knows right away how that person will respond. He knows the right words to say to, to, uh, to tackle that issue or to deal with conflict and that person. Without the Holy Spirit, I would say, It's impossible to navigate life because you don't know what's going on in that person's mind. But the Lord does, and the Lord knows that person's triggers, and the Lord knows how to teach you to navigate that person. That's why the Holy Spirit is important, Um, because he knows something that that we don't know. He knows that person's, he knows what they're going through. He knows what they can respond to. He knows how to talk to them. And he will show you, if you let him, how to how to talk to them. I heard, um, I heard somebody say one time, oh, the Holy Spirit doesn't care about little things. But I tend to disagree with that. The Holy Spirit cares about everything in your life. And if you bring everything to the Lord, He will the peace of God will show you how to navigate the situation. How to navigate the situation with, with a clear head. Chaos brings reaction. Uh, peace brings revelation. Chaos or being or being a reactionary. Being reactionary to any situation um, brings chaos. But having peace in the situation brings the ability to navigate the situation. The Lord really wants his church to learn how to navigate through their lives. And he wants to give you tools and revelation on people and situations in your in your life. And he wants you to have a super supernatural peace so that you have a 
I have a clear head to navigate through your life. So guys, I will see you later. I'll see you next week. Happy Mother's Day again. Bye. May his peace be with you till we meet again. May his peace be with you till we meet again. Till we reach that distant shore And we'll share a tear no more May he give you strength to endure Till we meet That's old school Kirk Franklin. I'll see you next week, Lord willing. Bye.